We previously modeled the geometry of a pinhole camera, which is effectively a light-proof box with a small aperture that allows a limited amount of light reflecting off objects in the scene to pass through and strike the sensor plane. The result is an idealized yet surprisingly useful approximation of the cameras commonly used on a variety of robots, including ducky bots. The model describes how points in the world are mapped to image space coordinates, first by transforming the points into the camera's reference frame, and then projecting the points onto the image plane. In order to use this model, we need to know its parameters, such as the focal lengths and skew of the camera, and its pose relative to the frame of the world or the robot. Calibration refers to the process of estimating these parameters. Having a mathematical expression for perspective projection allows us to reason over a robot's three-dimensional world from two-dimensional images. Suppose that we've developed an algorithm that detects lane markings in the images streamed from the DuckyBot's forward-facing camera. In order to use these detections to keep the DuckyBot in its lane, it would be useful to understand where they are in relation to the robot. As we will see, calibrating the camera allows us to transform these detections into the robot's reference frame. The result can then be used to understand the lane geometry and where the robot is relative to the lane. Today we are going to look at different approaches to calibrating a camera. The pinhole camera model can be represented as a product of two matrices, one defined in terms of up to five parameters intrinsic to the camera, and the other specifying the camera's six degree of freedom pose. Ignoring lens distortion, there is a total of 11 parameters that define the camera model. The calibration process typically involves associating the coordinates of points in the scene with their corresponding projections onto the image plane. Each correspondence provides two constraints on the projection model, one for each of the two image coordinates. With 11 degrees of freedom in the model, we need at least six point pairs, but have to be careful about avoiding degeneracies. For example, the three points can't all lie on the same line or the same plane. In practice, we use a calibration target that provides a well-defined set of 3D points that are easy to detect in the image often involving one or more checkerboard patterns. One option for calibrating the camera is to directly estimate the entries of the 3x4 camera matrix P that maps 3D scene points to their 2D image coordinates. While the matrix has 12 entries, there are only 11 degrees of freedom, since perspective projection is only defined up to scale. We can multiply both sides of the equation and in turn the projection matrix by any non-zero constant without affecting the projection of scene points onto the image. To see how we might do this, Let's write the camera matrix as a concatenation of three four-dimensional vectors, one for each row of P. For a particular point pair, we can express the Cartesian coordinates of the projected point in terms of the inner product of these vectors and the homogeneous coordinates of the world point. Note that we need to remember to divide by the last entry in the homogeneous image space vector. Rearranging terms gives us a system of two equations that are linear in the entries of the camera matrix which we can express as the product of a 2 by 12 matrix and a 12-dimensional vector that is a concatenation of the vectors pi. Adding the other point pairs, we get a system of 2 times n linear equations. This corresponds to a homogeneous linear system, a times p equals 0, where a is a matrix with 2 times n rows and 12 columns, and p is the vector of camera matrix parameters. We can identify the camera matrix by solving this linear system. Of course, the trivial solution of a 12-dimensional zero vector is one solution, but that isn't terribly useful. One can show that the matrix A has rank 11, meaning that there exists a non-trivial solution defined by the one-dimensional null space of A. In theory, if there is no noise in the coordinates of the three-dimensional points and their corresponding projections of the image, we can solve for P exactly. However, there will always be errors in the coordinates of the projected points. Instead, we can solve for the vector p that minimizes some cost function. Since the original goal is to find the value of p for which a times p is a zero vector, a natural choice is to minimize the norm of a times p. Because p is scale invariant and we want to avoid the trivial solution, we impose the constraint that p be a unit vector. It is straightforward to show that the optimal solution is given by the eigenvector of the matrix A transpose A with the smallest eigenvalue. Having estimated the camera matrix, an additional step is necessary to solve for the intrinsic and extrinsic parameters of the camera. One limitation of using the direct linear transform for calibration is that it doesn't allow us to incorporate prior knowledge about the intrinsic or extrinsic parameters. In practice, we often have information about some of these parameters. For example, the data sheet of the camera may specify that the pixels are square or that the skew is near zero. An alternative approach is to formulate calibration as an optimization problem that directly estimates the intrinsic and extrinsic parameters in a way that allows us to incorporate initial parameter estimates. Consider a calibration target that provides a set of 3D points of known pose that are easy to detect in images. 
Suppose that a camera in the environment images the calibration object. Given estimates of the camera calibration matrix and the camera pose, we can predict where a point on the target will project onto the image using a nonlinear function f that describes the projective operation. The distance between the predicted point and the detected point provides a measure of the error in our estimates of the intrinsic and extrinsic parameters. This distance is referred to as the reprojection error. Summing these errors over the different point pairs provides a loss function that we can optimize. Typically, we capture additional views by moving the camera and or the target around in the environment and include the corresponding reprojection errors in the loss function. As mentioned earlier, we often use checkerboards for calibration, including in Ducky Town, because they provide scene points that are easy to detect and that have well-defined coordinates. Another advantage is that they are easy to make. We just have to hit the print button. In practice, we collect a series of images by moving the calibration target rather than the camera around in the scene, being careful to span a range of different scales and orientations. We now have a nonlinear least squares problem, which is typically solved in an iterative fashion. We first initialize the intrinsic matrix based on any prior knowledge we have of the parameters, such as information provided in the camera's data sheet. We then use this initialization to derive an initial estimate of the camera pose. At this point, we can use our favorite optimizer, such as Levenberg Marquat, to iteratively solve for the intrinsic and extrinsic parameters that minimize the reprojection error. Keep in mind that there's no guarantee that the resulting estimates are globally optimal. Oftentimes, we do this as part of a robust estimation algorithm like RANZAC in order to reduce the effects of erroneous point pair correspondences. Having calibrated the camera, we can use the resulting intrinsic and extrinsic parameters to relate image coordinates with their corresponding rays in 3D. Critically, we can't recover the 3D coordinates of the original scene points because of the many-to-one nature of perspective projection, whereby all points that lie along a common ray project onto the same point in the image. One way to recover additional structure of the scene is to take advantage of prior knowledge of the environment. For example, an effective perspective projection is that lines that are parallel in the world typically won't be parallel in the image. Knowing that lines in the image are actually parallel in the world allows us to exploit properties of perspective projection to recover 3D structure, up to scale, of course. Alternatively, we can move the camera around to image the scene from different viewpoints and then triangulate the resulting 2D to 3D projections to estimate scene structure. Both approaches are widely used in computer vision and robotics as a means of reasoning over the 3D world based on two-dimensional images. In the case of Ducky Town, much of the scene structure that we are concerned with lies on a two-dimensional ground plane. As we will see, we can exploit this planarity to simplify visual perception. This idea is not specific to Ducky Town, however. Many real-world self-driving systems rely on the assumption that the ground under and around the robot is locally planar. Here we see a video from the DARPA Urban Challenge that visualizes the robot's estimates of the lane geometry. Estimates that exploit the prior belief that the lane markings in the vicinity of the car lie on a plane. This idea is also not specific to self-driving vehicles. A popular approach to reconstructing the seafloor based on images acquired from an underwater vehicle involves the creation of photomosaics, which relies on the assumption that the seafloor is planar. In order to understand how planarity may be helpful, suppose that we have a set of points that lie in a plane in the world, and that these points are imaged by a camera. As we have been doing with perspective projection, we can represent both as projective planes. There exists a 3 by 3 matrix H that transforms points on the world plane to their corresponding homogeneous coordinates in the image. The inverse of this matrix then maps points in the image to their associated points on the world plane. This transformation is known as a homography. Similarly, given a different image of the world plane, there exists another homography that provides an invertible transformation between the world plane and the new image. Composing these two homographies results in a homography that maps one image to the other. In order to see that such a transformation exists, suppose that we have a camera that images a set of points that lie on a common plane in the world. Without loss of generality, assume that this is the XY plane in the world coordinate system. As we have seen, the camera matrix relates the homogeneous coordinates of points in the world to their corresponding projection on the image plane. Since the world points lie on the xy plane, the z-coordinate for each point is zero. Consequently, we could ignore the second to last column in the extrinsic matrix. Multiplying the two matrices gives rise to the three by three homography matrix. This transformation is defined up to scale, meaning that we can multiply it by any non-zero scalar without affecting the mapping between the two planes. Consequently, the homography matrix has eight rather than nine degrees of freedom. 
Note that we derived the homography matrix as including both intrinsic and extrinsic parameters. We could just as well have written the transformation from world to image coordinates as a homography that maps points in the world plane to a plane in the camera's reference frame, followed by an intrinsic matrix that projects these points onto the image. In this case, we would estimate the extrinsic homography and the intrinsic matrix separately. The question now is how we go about estimating the homography matrix based on a set of known point correspondences. Just as we did with the camera matrix, we can use the expression for the projective transformation to derive two equations for each point pair that are linear in the elements of the homography matrix. Given n point pairs, we can concatenate these equations to form a homogeneous linear system. Assuming that we have at least four point pairs, the matrix A, which has size 2n times 9, has a rank of 8. The non-trivial solution to the set of equations then lies in the one-dimensional null space of A. As we discussed earlier, we can't hope to solve for the homography exactly. Instead, we can solve for the homography that minimizes the L2 norm of A times H. In part, to avoid the trivial solution, we impose the constraint that the solution be a unit vector. We can then solve for the vector H and, in turn, the homography via singular value decomposition. Just as with the camera matrix, a better approach is to estimate the homography by minimizing the reprojection error. In the context of the ducky bot, we are interested in a homography that transforms points in the image to and from the ground plane defined with respect to the robot's reference frame. The standard ducky town calibration procedure estimates this transformation based on the correspondence between points in the world plane and their readily detected points in the image. The result enables us to reason over things like the parameterization of the robot's lane from road paint markings detected in images from the robot's forward-facing camera. 